and welcome to Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium on the campus of The Ohio State University. It's day two of the Division Three OHSAA State Meet. Today are the finals, and this broadcast is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. These girls are off and running. Lane one, Kayla Eaton, Triad two, Aurora Schubert, Dayton Christian, three, Shelby Grover, Lucas, four, Azure, Travis Woodmore, five, Liv Lindemann, Delphus Jefferson, six, Cece Worsham, Temple Christian, seven, Macy Miller, Prairie six, eight, Grace Muller, Baron Local, and nine, Lexi Plot Carey. Yeah, take a look at Travis, gets the win because of the, her great start. Just a, a little bit of an advantage on the start, able to carry that through to get the victory. Great way to open up this track championship Saturday. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? That's right. Right here, right now, our local runner, Delphus Jefferson's Lindemann, gets the third place. And CeCe Worsham, fighting adversity after a car accident this past Sunday, gets the fourth place spot. Yeah, How great, exciting. Great to see CeCe do a good job down here on Saturday. Hey, she looked kind of rough after that uh, car accident, but what great determination to be able to compete down here and finish in the top three. 1463 is the time for Lindemann. 1468 is the time for Worsham. Marion Locals Moeller finishes eight, also makes the podium with a time of 1542. And so I'm here with CC Worsham of Temple Christian. Next and CC, you placed fourth in the 100 hurdles, but I noticed when you were standing up there, you were very emotional. Talk to me what was going through your head during the podium ceremony for this event. Um, I wasn't super happy with how I, how I ran, but I'm happy to even be here in the first place. Like, it just had to hit me and I had to understand that I could not have an eye, I could not have been here at all. So I should just be happy to be here and I'm glad I even got to ran. I'm here with Liv Lindemann of Delphus Jefferson taking third in the 100 meter hurdles. So just walk me through your mind being able to place top three in this event to start the day. Um, it definitely all starts with the night before getting that rest in and just mentally preparing myself to have the confidence to come out here and do it today. And so you finished ninth last year in this event. What work went into preparing for this year and being able to see your work pay off with the top three finish? Um, one thing that I learned from the past year is sometimes little is more, so don't be hurdling every single day. Sometimes the body needs rest and kind of took that one to heart, especially for this week. So happy to come out here and place top three. Thank you so much, congratulations. Next event, the boys won 10 meter hurdles. Here are your runners. In lane one, Chaz Miller of Dixie. Lane two, Jeremy Reber of Waynedale. Three, Mason Socor of Bel Air. Four, Alex Underwood of Georgetown. Five, David Blackmon LeBray. Six, Colton Reese of Versailles. Seven, Justin Finkbein, Tri Village. Eight, Michael Baloney of Louisville. And nine, Carter Herman of Edgerton. Oh, oh, we had one fall. A little bit of a stumble by Alex Underwood, going to cost him the championship. I think it's going to be Mason Sokar from Bel Air that gets it. That's a bummer for him. We know that can happen, but he did come in with the fastest seed time. Wow. Let's take a look and see how our Versailles runner finished up. Colton Reese, he gets second place, 14.89. Second place for Reese from Versailles. Colton Reese came in with a 14.92, so Jennifer, he shaved some time off there getting that second place. Before we uh, go to break, I just want to give you a quick update on our scores. At the present moment with the girls, Lucas is winning with 23.5. Our closest local team is Minster, and they are tied for eighth with Lehman Catholic and a few others. In the boys' side, it's Columbus Grove currently winning. They had a powerhouse day yesterday with the uh, um, uh, field events. Tenora is second, Marion Local is third, and Bluffton is fifth. All right, we got to go to break. We'll be back in a moment with the 100 meter dash. So I'm here with Colton Reese of Versailles. Colton, you t play second in the hurdles. Talk to me about your thoughts, your reaction to being able to place top two in this event. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things, beginning of the year, you're not sure what to expect. And I kept working, got towards the end of the season, and I had really high expectations for myself. For me, that's like always, I can have someone a whole second in front of me, I'm thinking, I'm going for first. But I didn't run the best race I could have today, but I mean, I still went out with a bang to end my high school career, and I can't complain. We are off and running in the girls' 100-meter dash. We are watching lane two, Izzy Zahn from Coldwater. Lane five, Alex 
Kesson of Delta St. John's in lane eight, Audra Myers of Riverdale. Your winner is in lane four, Leah Smith of Calvert. Izzy Zahn did a great job giving a battle early in this race. The MAC record holder did a good job of competing. Top eight make it to the podium. And we have Riverdale's Myers, Audra Myers, finishing in fourth place from way outside there. Zahn gets fifth, and Kesson gets sixth. All right, I'm here with Audra Myers of Riverdale. And talk about your fourth place finish and kind of the goals you had for yourself today and kind of how that matchups with where you finished. Uh, my goal coming into this was I just really wanted to make podium. I know in prelims I was seated 15th, so I just wanted to get a PR. But I did PR, and I PR'd by a really good amount that got me to finals. And I was like, OK, well, I'm here. I mean, I don't know if I can run that again, but I'm just going to try and PR. And, and then I guess I did, and it just I came in with a good mindset, and it really helped me. I definitely throughout this season, especially at this meet. And being able to start your day with a PR as a senior, kind of reflect on how PRing and how that will reflect on your career as a whole going out as a senior? Um, <laughs> sorry, I don't know. Um, well, can you repeat the question? I absolutely sorry. can. Just reflect on your track career and how being able to PR to kind of somewhat finish it off how that kind of feels? Um, it honestly feels really good. I mean, a PR is it's always great to have that, but in my head, almost like a PR is like a win to me, you know? Um, I'm not out here to beat other people. I, I want to beat myself, you know? I just want to better myself, and um, yeah. Boys 100 meter dash, this meet is moving fast and these guys are going to move fast as well. In lane one, it's Braden Austin of Summit Country Day. Two, Kaylin Butler of Mechanicsburg. Three, Aiden Jones of Brookfield. Your top seed coming in is from Anna. Lane four, Justin Richards. Five, Cole Miller of Paint Valley. Six, Gabe Opong of Tree of Life. In seven, it's Jacob Hirschberger from Allen East. Eight, Addison Remeyer from Ashland Crestview. And in nine, Colton Bishop of Twin Valley South. This promises to be a great race, Jennifer. Richard is the best time, as you said, for the best athlete in the SCAL and track voted on this year. But never doubt Jacob Hirschberger. What a competitor from Allen East. He's in lane seven. Richards is in lane four. Oh, Richards, look at him go there. He's being challenged up by lane five. Cole Miller. And Miller got it. Cole Miller's ability to finish. The last 20 yards of this, I think, is going to give him the victory. 10-7-5 is the champion. Anna's Richards gets the silver, coming in second with a 10.81. That's should Hold on here for a second so we can look for the results and see where Hirschberger finished up. He gets fifth, 10.94. Pretty ja nice run. Jacob Hirschberger is going to be taking that speed with him to Ohio Northern. What a great athlete, played baseball this year and track. They got a good one going to Ohio Northern. You're watching the Division Three State Track Finals here at The Ohio State University. This broadcast is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's seamless spouting. It's our first relay final of the day, and it's the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay. We have three local teams that we are watching. Here are all of the runners. Lane 1, Norwayne. Lane 2, Minster. Lane 3, Coldwater. Lane 4, the defending champions, Tiffin Calvert. Lane 5, Margareta. Lane 6, Liberty Center. Lane 7, New Middleton Springfield. Lane 8, Montpelier. And Lane 9, Mooney. Uh, Jennifer, a lot of these teams uh, could challenge for this title because you look at their times coming in, so close to call, really the exchange could be vital today. Absolutely, the exchange is so important. We saw some batons get dropped yesterday. We saw some hearts get broken because of that. You know, relay's done at that well, point. You, you talk to track coaches and they always say, and even some of the athletes, you can't work on the exchange enough, right? Exactly. It has to be second nature by this time. So, so far this morning, we've had a pretty quick morning. They had those uh, 100 sprints going fast. Now we get the relays going, and looks like we got the white flag, the all clear for one of the officials down there. 
And keep your eye on lane two with the Minster, the regional champ from Troy. Great grouping of Heckman, Williams, Larger, Larger and, uh, and Cedarleaf. You know, as we're waiting for this race to start, we just want to remind you that even though we are blessed with a lot of incredible sponsors for this event, we are so grateful for all of them. You also have an opportunity to be a sponsor of events just like this one. It's your chance to support local high school sports by sponsoring an event through WOSN. Just give us a call at 419-339-4444 if you want more information on sports sponsorship opportunities. Temperature today is expected to rise into the mid-90s again, so it is teaming up to be another hot and bright day for running. It's such a weird thing. You start the track season in 32-degree <laughs> weather and finish it in 92. Well, and you think about what kind of conditions these runners had, at least up in Northwest Ohio, what we had. Most of our track season was cold and rainy. Uh, we had a lot of meets where we were piling on more layers and more layers and more layers by the end of that meet. <laughs> Uh, talking to the athletes yesterday as they came off, one of the things that they did say that's nice about having hot temperatures, you don't have to try and get loose throughout the day time and time oh, again. Good thought, yes. They, they stay loose because of the temperature helps them with that. Now, getting hydrated and surviving the heat, that's a different thing. Right, super important, of course. Very, very, very important to keep hydrated. All right, after that um, kind of unexpectedly long wait, they are now ready to get this race going. Well, Miles, I thought they were ready to go. Uh, I guess they are. There's a set Here we call. Go. All right, lane two has Minster, lane three Coldwater, and lane six Liberty Center. According to our papers, Kerry Heckman is the leadoff for Minster. Izzy's on for Coldwater and Callie Stoner for Liberty Center. A good job with the selection with Izzy Zahn doing a good job. That's right. She's almost got that stagger made up in the lane to her right. Here comes the first exchange. I think that might have been New Middleton Springfield may have had the first exchange. Still tough to tell at this point in the race. Tiff and Calvert, your defending champions, are in four. Coldwater running strong in three. Minster's in two. Liberty Center is in six. Pretty nice handoff there for Liberty Center in six. Yeah, Liberty Center's been clean so far, but look at Coldwater taking off now. Coldwater's third runner, according to our list, is Becca Winning. Sometimes the, the uh, coaches do change things up different than what we have, but that's what we've got here. Becca Winning, Peyton Army for Liberty Center, and Anna Larger for Minster. And this is it, the anchors have the batons. Yeah, one of the most exciting things in track this turn to the straightaway. And you can hear the crowd. That's oh. the exciting thing about this, the crowd. Oh, look at Coldwater. Look at lane three. Calvert's up there, but man, Coldwater is working hard to challenge. Can Lee Smith from Calvert hold it off? Oh, Coldwater is excited. She's so excited. She just did a backflip, a <laughs> backward <laughs> somersault. Second place for Coldwater with a time of 143.47. Uh, Liberty Center getting third of 144.04 and Minster fourth, 2-3-4. I think our that local was teams. Allison Hamburg from Coldwater. <laughs> the enthusiasm got the better of her. She did a little backflip, got up. The adrenaline running, boy, she was excited. I'm with your second place finisher in the 4x200 relay, the Coldwater Cavaliers. Ladies, go ahead and say your name and your grade for me. Um, I'm Becca Lenning, I'm a junior. I'm Allison Hamburg, I'm a senior. I'm Izzy Zahn and I'm a sophomore. I'm Kirsten Keller and I'm a sophomore. And so you guys are able to take second place. Just kind of what's the reaction, what's the feeling knowing you guys were able to pull off such feet? 
Well, we knew our school record was a 145, so if we could get that, we knew we would be up there. So that was the goal, and then we chased that down, and second place came with it. So we're really excited. And so you guys placed 11th last year. What kind of work went into preparing for this year and being able to see that work pay off? I think the key was to just not forget it throughout the season. Like, it was kind of a pain in our side remembering it the whole time, but it's what pushed us, and we didn't want a repeat of last year, so. Thanks, ladies, so much, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Boys 4x200 meter relay, we have three local teams that we are following. Here are your teams in all the races. Dalton in one, Margareta in two, Lowellville in three, Allen East in four, Anna in five, Black River in six, St. Henry in seven, St. Paul in eight, and Ness Nelsonville, York in nine. Yeah, Jennifer Allen East and Anna, they promised to have a great battle here today, both with times of 1-3-0. Of course, Allen East, the regional champs, best for foursome ever in the school history of Allen East. And Anna finished sixth last year in this event. If it comes down to an anchor, Justin Richards from Anna and Trey Hensley from Allen East, that'll be an incredible battle. So we've got Jacob Hirschberger leading off for Allen East in four right now. He loves getting out of the blocks and he loves blazing his way down the track. Chase Murray for Anna and Ryan Weirly for St. Henry. Four, five, and seven are our local lanes. Yeah, Hirschberger runs angry. <laughs> but he's such a nice guy. He is. He's got a goal though. Hirschberger and Hensley, both baseball players who decided to do track this year. Well, look at take a look at Nelsonville York at nine. There, that runner is making some ground up. Watch the handoffs here. Anna, Allen East, both right there towards the leader. Anna's third runner taken off in a big storm, Ben That's, McDermott. Yeah, Ben McDermott just shot out of a cannon when he got the baton in his hand. Ison Schaefer working hard for Allen East, about to hand it to Trey Hensley. Always fun to watch Trey Hensley run. Hensley, such a dominant anchor. Watch oh, him take it up there. That was so close. That handoff was so close. But look at Hensley go. He might be the best closer in the business. Hensley getting it done yet again for Allen East. Does he have enough left in the tank? Trey Hensley of Allen East is about to give his team a state championship, and it just happened. Mr. Electricity, Trey Hensley does it again for Allen East. Allen East first place with a 129.57. What a fun story of the season. Baseball players jumping in with the track runners for a state championship. Congratulations to them. I'm here with the Allen East boys, your state champion in the 4x200 meter relay. Guys, say your first and last names for me and what grade you're in. Uh, Jackson Friesner, and I'm a sophomore. Jacob Hersberger, I'm a senior. Isaac Schaefer, a junior. Trey Hensley Jr. Perfect. And so state champions, what's that feel like? Uh, it's great. You know, I don't think it's really set in yet. Just the fact to know that we're on top right now, but it's it's a surreal feeling. <laughs> what kind of work goes into preparing to try not only to compete for a state championship but ultimately win it? Uh, it's a lot of hard work and dedication. You know, when it comes to track, there's a lot of little things that go into it, and I think the whole state run that we made, the one most important thing we were focusing on was taking care of that baton because going into most of them, we knew we had a good chance of making it out, but taking care of that baton is the most important thing. So that's what we worked on for the most of the postseason, was taking care of the little things and just hoping it paid off. And <laughs> it did. Thank you so much again. We're back at the state track D3 finals, and this broadcast is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. We now move to our first distance race for the day, and this is the girls' 1,600-meter run. Here's who we have running. Lily Scheifer of Seneca East, Elena Mann of Botkins, Jaylee Wingate of Norway, Lauren Sattler of Tenora, Cecilia Chase of Colonel Crawford, Megan Hippel of McDonald, Eleonora Smith of Ottawa Hills, Brynn Lee Moody from Lincoln View, Isabella Ferryman of Dayton Christian, Laura Hamm of Dawson Bryant, Olivia Vogelpohl of Woodmore, the defending champion Kaylee Richards of Maplewood, Tess Schultz of Ludenville, Foul Andrea of Miller City, Rachel Hoover of Fairbanks, Margaret Hemelgarn of Minster, Reese Landis of New London, and Audrey Wade of East Canton. 
And Jennifer, last year Richards won this with an incredible time of 445.21. Absolutely flew around her four laps. Yeah, incredible, uh, incredible uh, time for her. 4.56.45 is the time that she has coming in right now as these ladies make their way around to the fourth curve of their first lap. You've got one leader and a big pack right behind. Best time coming in today, though, was Jaylee Wingate from Norway in a 4.51.42. The senior hoping for the upset. Of course, unlike yesterday, where we had prelims for a lot of things, no prelims for this event. These ladies only have to run this once, and today is that time. And considering the heat, they're probably pretty happy about that. And Brown 110 on the first lap. Brindley Moody from Lincoln View, just a freshman. We've been watching her all season. Really, I had to have a very great season. A lot of wins. She's a she's a real methodical runner. She plans her race. A lot of times I've seen her sit back in the pack for a while and then she makes her move right when she knows she's ready to go. Another runner that has that same kind of game plan, Jennifer Margaret Hemmelgarn from Minster. Finished eighth here a year ago. Watched her race many times. Very methodical. Always has a plan and then just kind of captures it on the last lap of the event. Margaret Hemmelgarn, also a member of the state championship cross country team for Minster. So we've seen her in various running venues. She's got that strong Minster running gene in there. Yeah, they got off to a great start yesterday, winning the 32. That was an exciting race to watch, absolutely. And if you at home did not get a chance to see that, we promise you we're gonna be re-airing our D3 prelims all throughout the week. So you got lots of track and field to watch pretty much all throughout the summer. All right, the ladies are just about halfway through. 225 is right about where we are, uh, which is gonna put us, you know, close to five minute mark if they keep up that pace. Yeah, Megan Hippel from McDonald, your leader. The senior with a 455.99 coming into today. And uh, Jennifer, it doesn't matter what your time is as long as you're the first one to cross that well, line, right? Well, there you right? go. That's a, that's, that's a good philosophy, Miles. <laughs> that's right. That's a good, good track philosophy. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you run as long as you're the first one to finish. All right, as you can see, we've got four ladies who are right up there. And they're going to have to start thinking about what they're going to do at this point because we're just about at, you know, just about one and a half laps left to go. So it's going to be time to turn that on pretty soon. Of course, we're going to see that once they hit that one lap to go mark. Yeah. Actually, now that I say that, I think we're starting to see it now as our leader is starting to pull herself away from the others. Yeah, see Hipple with the kick on the back turn. See if she extends that lead here on this straightaway. Trying to separate, put some doubt into runners behind her. That's Wingate from Norway directly behind Hipple. And uh, Sattler from Tenora hanging out in third place. There's the bell, which means it's the last lap. And now we're going to see who's got the kick here with this ladies. That's the thing about the 400, which and is amazing. You see an, they a, kick an it attack in. here on the, on the turn. Always tough to do to take the lead on the turn. So you're, you're spending a lot more energy being outside. And you have to really work hard to get back in front. Well, we've had a lead change, as you can see from your camera angle there. New leader here as we now hit the final 200 in this 1600 meter run at the state championship. You wonder, did Hipple just expend too much energy on the early part of this race? Well, here come the claps and the cheers from the fans as we welcome in our leader here, Jaylee Wingate of Norway. There's your state champion. Now it looks like Sattler from Tenor going to be able to hold off the third place. Round of 5.03, which would be a nice time drop for her. She came in with a 5.07. Tenora is third, officially. Sattler with a 5.02.88. Yeah, I see Hamelgarn from Minster just finishing up right there as well. I'm here with Lauren Sattler of Tenora. 
who just placed third in the girls 1600. Mm -hmm. So what's going through your mind being able to finish top three in that event? Well, this is just such, such an amazing experience. I'm just happy to be out here. It's a bit hot out and I got one more race, but I'm so proud of the way I ran and I'm so proud of the other girls. And so you are a junior. Yep. How is this going to motivate you going into your senior season? So last year I was hurt and I had a pretty bad season. So this year, this season was kind of my comeback. Let's feel it out, you know. And so finishing third just puts me in a great mental space for going into next year and just pushes me to go farther. Thank you so much and congratulations. Yes, thank you. The boys 1600 meter run. Last year's champ, Grady Yinks from Perry, also set the state meet record and the D3 record last year. He is running down in uh, Nashville area, D1 runner. Here's what we have running here on this race. In lane one, Jackson Durfee of Tenora. Next, we have Braden Obring of Reed, Reed Eastern, Brylin Holland of East Canton, Kellen Riker, Jackson Center, Will Baker, Mount Gilead, Eden Antrim, Bluffton, Matthew Lee of Ansonia, Luke Snyder of Ritman, Larkin Woodward, Summit Country Day, Nick Schwartz of Pleasant, Riley Nixon of Ottawa Hills, Alex Donaldson of Maplewood, Thomas Franklin of Ottawa Hills, Dennison Murphy of Grandview Heights, Isaac Schulk of Mapleton, Trevor Heitkamp, Fort Recovery, Landon Iyer of White Oak, and Will Negley of Mechanicsburg. This is a star-studded cast for this race, Jennifer. The times on this are absolutely ridiculous. Best time in this, Luke Snyder from Ritman at 4, 18, 5, 6. I think a lot of them looked at Brady Inks last year and said, hey, that's a high bar that we have to get to. They've worked hard to get to it. They have. You know, last year they had to race against Brady Gings. Brady this was year they impressive. don't, which some of them are probably appreciative of. But the neat thing about the distance runners is so many of them, even though they race each other, they're also friends and they train together. They do long distance runs together. Jackson mm -hmm. Durfee from uh, Tenora, the senior with a 42209. He was a regional champ at Fostoria. Eden Antrim from Bluffton. He was part of that uh, championship winning four by eight team for Bluffton yesterday. And trying to see who we have here in the front. Eden's actually back there in the pack right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. About 10th, but you know, it's hard to really say anything because that's a big pack and a lot's gonna happen. Yeah, I would not be surprised if the lead changes hands many times in this, but it's uh, Braylon, Braylon Holland from East Canton currently with a two-step lead. And he does come in with a 417 flat. If I'm looking at my sheet correctly, that is the fastest oh, seat time is. coming I, in. I had Luke Snyder with the fat, but that's a whole second uh, faster. You mentioned a couple runners from Ottawa Hills when you're going through the roster here. I, I live two blocks from Ottawa Hill, so I've seen these guys run. I've had to stop my vehicle a couple times at a stop sign as they run by me. Well, thank you for stopping your vehicle. <laughs> right. <laughs> as, as a runner, I can say sometimes sometimes cars are drivers are not paying attention. We always have to be watching. Well, we are watching this pack make their way around. They're still running in a pack, which means some of these guys are actually running a little bit extra. Two, three out there into lane two. That is Luke Snyder hanging out in second spot. Eden Antrim right now from Bluffton making a move right there on the outside. Moved himself into about the sixth position there. If you're a NASCAR fan, they always say rubbing is racing. There's, a, there's some elbows touching each other in these packs. These guys are competitive and they're jockeying for position. Actually got to be careful with that as well at the regional, a four by 400 relay got disqualified for an elbow that was considered to be um, interference. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to be demonstrative with it, right? But at the same time, you want to get yourself positioned. And the guys are positioning themselves a little bit more, starting to spread out. Oh, almost, almost had a, a, a fall there. It looked like some feet got tangled up. Uh, using that adrenaline to launch himself, though. That's 
Riley Nixon of Otto Hills, who just moved his way up into the second spot. Bluffton's about eighth right now. Remember, we also have Fort Recovery, Tenora, and Jackson Center running in this race, too. Uh, Riley Nixon doing a great job of challenging the leader. He has spent a lot of energy at the last part of that third lap. Oh, I'm not sure if you can see it right now in the backstretch, those of you at home, but Eden Antrim just made another, another surge. He's currently one. Now he's in seventh right now, and he's making his way now again, getting ready to pass on the curve. Here he goes. If he does what he's planning to do, he's going to be in fourth in just a little bit. He finished fifth a year ago. He's making his move. Strong guys making their way in here. Looks like Holland's going to have Holland, enough. Riley Nixon. Antrim. Can Antrim hold on to fourth? What a run. Now our leaderboard's got an issue at the moment because it says Antrim in first place with a 317.23. Wouldn't he love to have that kind of time? Not exactly what he ran. Um, I'm sure that's going to get corrected here. Holland with first place, 413.51. Nixon second from Ottawa Hills. Snyder from Redman. Tenora gets fourth. Durfee from Tenora in a time of 419. Jackson Center gets fifth. So Antrim does just get bummed out. Uh, but we have four, five, and six for local runners making it to the podium here in the boys 1600 meter ride. Congratulations, ride. Jackson Durfee shaving a whole three seconds off. Ran his best here on a Saturday at the Jesse Oak. Well, we're going to go to break right now. When we come back, it'll be time for the girls 4x100 meter relay. You are watching the Division Three state track finals right here from the Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium, and you're watching it only on WOSN. I'm with Eden Antrim of Bluffton and a school record holder finishing the boys 1600 in 19 seconds, point oh three. And so what's it feel like not only being able to podium, but being able to say you're a school record holder? Oh, I'm, I'm just so happy to be here. Um, I know freshman year, that was COVID year, so we couldn't come out here and run. Um, and just, you know, the next three years, I've been eyeing that record. You know, every day in school, I just see it up there and I, I've been wanting this for a while. So, you know, I just thank God for just the opportunity of, you know, coming out here and doing this. So I can't be happier. Congrats and enjoy the day, man. Thank you. We're back with the state track D3 finals sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts Seamless Spouting. Girls 4x100 meter relay and our eyes are on lanes 5 and 9. Lane 5 has Liberty Center, lane 9 has Fort Recovery. Also running New Middleton Springfield in one, Colonel Crawford in two, Trinity in three, Dalton in four, again Liberty Center in five, Norway in six, Montpelier seven, Lake Center Christian in eight, Fort Recovery in nine. Now Dalton has your best time, 49.40. Liberty Center in lane five, directly to the right of Dalton, 50.08. And got a little bit of an issue here, Jennifer. That's right, we heard that second gun, which uh, technically or potentially means that we have a full start, which is a tough, tough thing. Sure is, let's hope uh, the officials do a good job here and everybody just gets to do it again. Which we did see yesterday. We heard the false start gun in the boys four by four. Thought that Bluffton had been disqualified, hadn't been. Came back in, ended up finishing third and is running in finals today. Imagine the nerves being the first one to take off. You're in the blocks, trying to get your energy in the right way and all of a sudden just take off a little bit too early. While we're waiting to see what happens here, just want to uh, encourage you to go to Mile Split and read the results for the 1600 um, because it appears that what we were reading off of the computer here may not be accurate as far as what the actual results were. So head over there to see the results of the 1600 meter run. And now we're back to the girls 4x100. 
Lane 5, Liberty Center. Lane 9, Fort Recovery. Well, it appears the first start was just a practice. Well, actually, lane nine is not there. Yeah, I did. Uh, so that would be Fort Recovery. <laughs> Unfortunate for Fort Recovery not to be running. We're watching Liberty Center in lane five with Callie Stoner, Haley Moeller, Peyton Army, and Ellie Moeller. Hey, Stoner, great job on that first part of that Liberty Center relay. But look at Haley Moeller go for Liberty Center, eating up some track. Important third exchange, clean, and our runners are making their way around, getting ready for that fourth exchange. Peyton Army carrying it now for Liberty Center. Ellie Moeller has it. It's, Can she catch? But it's Dalton in the lead right now. Liberty Center chasing her down. Dalton will be your state champion, but Liberty Center is going to come in second. What a run by Dalton. Liberty Center Challenge did everything they can, but Dalton just a little bit too tough. 49 flat was the official time, unofficial time really for Dalton. Second place Liberty Center with a 49.77. I'm with the Liberty Center girls who took second in the four by 100 relay. Girls, go ahead and say your first and last name for me. What grade you're in? I'm Peyton Army, I'm a senior. I'm El Moeller and I'm a junior. I'm Callie Stoner and I'm a freshman. And I'm Haley Moeller and I'm a senior. Now you ladies took fifth in this event last year. What motivated you guys and what did you work on to better yourselves this year? And how does it feel seeing your hard work pay off? Um, it's very exciting and I think we're all very proud of like the hard work that we put in this year. We've kept, we just kind of sat at the same time all year and we really wanted to break 50 so we worked really hard on our handoffs and yeah last year we didn't do great. I mean we did okay but this year it's definitely so exciting and like all the three of us have been here before and this is Callie's first year so like we just kind of got her ready for the meet and we knew we would do okay so. And you guys also took third today yeah. in the 4x2. What's it like being able to not only podium, but take two top three finishes so early in the day? It's definitely exciting. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. And congrats, ladies. Boys 4x100 meter relay. Lane 1, it's Margareta. Lane 2, it's Anna. 3, Black River. 4, Youngstown Valley Christian. 5, Marion Local. 6, Macomb. 7, Plymouth. 8, your 4x2 champions, Allen East. And 9, St. Henry. A Youngstown Valley Christian, unbelievable time of 42.88. They're in lane 4. They're your favorite. And Macomb, if they get a great start by Andrew Swisher, one of the best athletes in Northwest Ohio, young man was player of the year in on offense and defense in the fall. Great athlete. If he gets a great start, Macomb might steal this. And of course, Allen East, you can never count them out. If Trey Hensley has a shot, he might win it for him. Uh, Jacob Hirschberger out there in lane eight, getting his team off to a strong start, getting ready to hand off. And I think he may have handed off in first. It's hard to tell, though, as we're watching on this backstretch. Marion Local looking strong in five. McCombs in six. Allen East in eight. St. Henry in nine. And Anna in two. Well, Allen East has a shot. It's really going to come down to this anchor. Sure is. Hensley has it for Allen East. Oh, look at Marion Local, though. Marion Local in five. And Marquez Gibbs for Youngstown Valley Christian was impressive. That might have been Anna in two with the win. Let's wait for the results to see if we can get it. Youngstown Valley Christian repeats as a champion with a 43.13. Anna gets second. 43.5 is their time. Marion Local gets third. Oh, they tie for second. It was a tie. That's fantastic. 43.5. McComb gets fourth. Look at that local showing right down here at the state meet. Jennifer, it was McDermott and Richards for Anna did an incredible job to catapult them 
to the close uh, to winning this thing. I would imagine that after that four by two, they really wanted to come back and work hard on that. Alan East will make it back up onto the podium as well. They're in sixth, and St. Henry gets eighth. So our local teams have all made the All Ohio status. And we come back, 400 meter dash, Sydney Sin and Addison Swearingen when we return. I'm here with the Marion local boys who just finished third in the four by 100 relay, guys. Talk to me, was third your goal or did you kind of exceed what you expected from yourselves today? Uh, I'm just going to say, I don't know if these guys agree with me, but I was not expecting third. I was thinking like six, seven. I mean, these guys just, we ran good today. Perfect. And so what's the thought process? What kind of work goes into being able to finish top three on a level like this? I mean, I'd say first off is just your mindset. I mean, we knew we weren't. We were we won we won our heat, but we knew we weren't top two team in this race. And yeah, just we we've been preparing all year, practicing all year, practicing hard, and yeah. <laughs> Congrats, guys! Thank you so much. I'm with the Anna boys, who just placed second in the boys four by one hundred. Guys, say your first and last name for me. What grade you're in? Hi, I'm Chase Murray. Uh, I'm a senior. Uh, Justin Richards, and I'm also a senior. Uh, ben McDermott, I'm a senior. I'm Xavier McEldowney, I'm also a senior. And so you guys finished second, a group of seniors. Tell me what it's like to be able to go out on top as a senior, being able to place top two. Yeah, it, it for sure feels, it feels great. Us uh, four seniors, we've been working all these years for something like this. I mean, of course we wanted to get that first place, but you know, well, uh, we had a great time getting second place and with all the hard work they, we worked together. Uh, it built a lot of memories that we're definitely going to remember for sure. And so, not only did you guys play second, you play second in the four in the uh, boys 100 meter dash. Talk about what it's like, what work goes into being able to come away with a second place finish this year. Wow. Uh, well, it takes a lot of work in the off season for sure. I mean, a lot of sprint training, uh, block starts is the main key in the 100 meter dash. Where that's the advantage of the race. That's really it. Striding out is what you really need, and uh, drills that can help that is the number one goal that's going to get you out there. I mean, I want to get that first place today, but it was a really competitive race, and I'm happy where I stood. Thank you guys so much, and congratulations. Thank you. Time now for the 400 meter dash. You're watching the State Track D3 final, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the higher distributor of the structure Pergola X. We're watching lane two, Addison Swearingen of Fairlawn, and lane four, the defending 2022 champ, Sydney Sin of Wayne Trace. Other runners, lane one, Emma Tyrell of Bucyrus. Lane two, again, Swearingen of Fairlawn, three, Kylie Montgomery of Dawson Bryant. Sydney Sin is in four, Maddie Merritt of Legacy Christian, and five, Maddie Langacher of Smithville, and six, Olivia Hudson of Oberlin, seven, eighth, Razia, Razia Rios of Woodmore and nine, Olivia Saylor of Margareta. Hey, Jennifer, the sensational one, Sydney Sin from Wayne Trace, 55.81, the senior to defending champ, absolutely sensational. The glitter queen of Wayne Trace told me yesterday she loves to glitter up her teammates. I think I might see some glitter from behind her, uh, her spikes there. She is moving fast. Such a nice young lady to visit with yesterday. She is making her move here. Known for her final kick, so she's close to the opportunity to steal this one. She'll take it away. Sydney Sin is going to be attempting a pretty impressive double, the 400 and then the 800. The 800 is going to race in approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Here she comes around lane four, the lady in red. Sydney Sin from Wayne Trey. She's heading to Michigan State next year to run for them. And she Sydney is. Sin, feet away from being immortal yet again at Wayne Trace. Wow, nice time there as well. High 54s, no, 55 flat was the time she ran. She is your repeat state champion. 55 flat. In fact, she just broke the state and D3 record that was set by Brooke Turner back in 2004 with that run. Sydney Sin, have yourself a day, a champ and a record holder. 
Just about time for the boys' 400-meter dash, and as we wait for them, give you some quick update here on the results as of now. In the boys' race, Tenora, your current leader, over Columbus Grove, just a three-point difference right now. Marion Local is in fourth place. Bluffton is in seventh, and Allen East is in eighth. For the girls, Liberty Center is our highest local team. They are in fourth place right now. Coldwater seventh. Minster is in eighth. All right, now the boys 400 meter dash. We just saw Sydney Sin break the state and the D3 record. That was pretty neat. Trevor Stearns from Parkway is in lane one. Christian Davis from Brookfield in two. Jacob Rombach of Calvert in three. Evan Hudson of Oberlin in four. Cody Hustler of North Adams in five. Brandon Rogers of Cincinnati Christian in six. Peyton Bodner of St. Peter's in seven. And in Blankemeyer, Columbus Grove is in eight. And Trent Teeman from Elvis Jefferson is in nine. Uh, it's Hudson in lane four from Oberlin with the best time, 49.59. Blankenmeyer from Columbus Grove told me yesterday, Jennifer, his goal is to get on the podium. He was a little worried about not making it to Saturday, but good to see him out here. So we've got nine runners. Miles just talked about the podium. The top eight make it. That's always kind of tough to be that number nine. Number nine in the state is not a bad thing, but there's a little bit of twins when you don't make it on the podium. Backstretch running right now, lane four, Evan Hudson of Oberlin taking advantage of that back straightaway. Looks like it's still anybody's race. Separation will occur about right here. And it is Hudson indeed. 47-46, the state meet record set by John Wojeni from Bluffton back in 08. Evan Hudson from Oberlin, your current leader. Can Rogers catch? No. But Hudson's that was close. Get it. 48-69 was the state winning time here today. That is by Evan Hudson of Oberlin. Let's hold on for a moment and check and see how our local runners finished up. Stearns from Parkway finishing in fifth place. That's a good showing for Trevor Stearns, the sophomore. No doubt we're going to see him for the next two years down here. Great job for Trevor. Well, Blankenmeyer got his wish. He made the podium with an eighth place finish, so he got what he was hoping for. In the 300 hurdles, we're watching lane one, Kendall Rall of Riverdale. Lane two, Rylan Jones of Allen East. Lane three, Ariel Heitkamp of Fort Gormie. And lane five, Liv Lindemann of Delphus Jefferson. What a great local showing here in the finals. Uh, it sure is, and the times are so close. Grover from Lucas has your best time, 44.08. But Lindemann in lane five, 4594. She could steal this thing, really. Any misstep over top to hurdle might cost yourself a chance. You know what Liv Lindemann has is she has the focus and the goal setting. This lady has spent all season with a plan, and you can just see it on her face when she races. She knows where she's headed. She knows what she wants to do, and she's looking very strong and right she now. she got a shot here, Jennifer. She's been fighting a little bit of a lower back issue, but her de determination is showing out here in a big way. It's going to be a battle between Grover and Lindemann. But on the outside. Out and Dawson Bryant, though, sneaking out some outside smoke there. In fact, whoa, look at lanes eight and nine. Nine. Nine gets lane it. Lane nine Travis gets it. Travis from Woodmore. Zero Travis has had a great meet this weekend. We've said her name quite a few times. The Lindemann, though, has nothing to be disappointed on in this run, and she's just a junior. She's got another year to come back and work at it. Lindemann finishes in well, Ryland Jones gets fifth place, makes her way to the podium. Lindemann in fourth place. So we've got Delphus Jefferson in fourth. Lindemann, Alan East Jones in fifth. Heitkamp from Fort Recovery finishes in seventh. And McDaniel and Travis, great job for them. It made the last turn. The straightaway was theirs. And they are able to get up there, especially for Travis to steal this win. I'm here with Ryland Jones of Allen East, who just took fifth in the girls' 300 hurdles. You took sixth or 16th last year, I think it was. Yes. What kind of work went into not only improving but being able to take a top five finish? I'm definitely working all the time, going over hurdles. I'm just not comfortable with them yet. I only I started in eighth grade, so I've only had a few years compared to other girls. We've done a lot more conditioning, which is what I needed to get here, compared to last year. 
Was this your goal, a top five finish, or did you kind of exceed expectations for yourself? I definitely exceeded expectations. At the end of the season, I just wanted to make it down here again. And then once I made it down here, my goal was to be in the finals, but just to be able to be on the podium. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Boys 300 meter hurdles. Lane one, Braxton Barnett of Shenandoah. Lane two, Michael Bologna of Louisville. Lane three, Carter Herman of Edgerton. Lane four, Kellen Schlagbaum of Ottoville. Lane five, Trevor Vogt of Colonel Crawford. Lane six, Owen Reindler of Marion Local. Lane seven, Colton Reese of Versailles. Lane eight, Cameron Crothers of Trinity. And lane nine, Lucas McEwen of Lakota. Well, lane four, Kellen Schlagbaum. He's looking to drop a Schlage bomb on the rest of the field here today. The young man from Ottaville, one of the most impressive track athletes I was able to cover this year. Absolutely a dominant dude, a PCL runner of the year. He is in lane four. The fun thing about the hurdles is all you got to do is see who makes it over first, and you know who is in the lead. And I believe it is Kellen Schlagbaum doing exactly what you predicted from Ottoville. Yeah, watch, watch him pick for up the speed. big O to make its way around this track. He doesn't drift over top. He snaps over top. That back leg gets to the ground in a hurry. So it's Ottoville in the lead, but it's Reitler from Marion Local who's in second place right now. Going to have a local one and two, Jennifer. You got it. Look at that. What a race. Sagbaum gets the official win with a 38.59. Marion Local gets the second place with a 38.86. Got to be pretty pleased, both two young men on the down there on the field. And congratulations to Owen. Ran a tremendous la last part of the race to get up there and get the second spot. But Kellen Schlegbaum, he was dominant all year, dominant again today. I'm here with Kellen Schlegbaum of Autoville, who is your state champion in the boys' 300 hurdles. What's the feeling being able to call yourself that? Uh, Worked two years for it. I got down here as a sophomore in last year, and I kind of had disappointing races. So I kind of knew what to expect this year, and it felt good to run somewhere I'd been before, and it was overall a really good race. What were you able to do in the off season to better yourself from a fifth place finish last year to state champion this year? I do three sports, and typically my summer consists of just soccer and basketball. But I think that kind of helps. Soccer's the uh, most conditioned sport, I think, that you can really do. You're out in the heat, running. 80 minutes a game. So as far as track goes, I don't really do a whole lot with that. It's just kind of the hurdle work when track season comes around. So basketball and soccer is really my summer, and that's that's kind of what my summer consists of every year. So. To be honest, was this the goal for you coming in? Oh, yeah. This was from the beginning of the year. I knew it was possible, and I'm glad I could take it. All right. Congrats, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Owen Rindler, senior from Marion Loku, who just placed second in the boys' 300 hurdles. Was that the goal coming into the day? Obviously, the goal is to win it, but I ran a great PR, 38.8. That's probably a second and a half more than I have really ever done, so I'm pretty proud of that. So what kind of emotions are going through your mind knowing that on your last day as a senior you were able to take second? Um, I've had a rough couple past years. My sophomore year, I made it to state. I got first in prelims, hit a couple hurdles, finished eighth, so that was pretty disappointing. And then my junior season, I dislocated my shoulder three times in football. That set me back. I had to do rehab and surgery. And then later that track season, I actually dislocated my hip hurdling. And uh, so they sedated me. It took about two hours to finally put it back in. But I woke up and I had a chance to have a complete hip replacement at the age of 17 and the chance to never run again. So I'm pretty grateful that I can actually compete out here at high level. It means a lot to me. What were you able to take away from all that adversity? It made me a stronger individual and uh, brought me closer to my faith because I've had to kind of fall back on that through tough times. Well, congrats and thank you very much. Thank you. The 800 meter run is about to begin. You're watching Division Three State Track Final, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Bolt's Seamless Spouting. Folks, this is going to be a great race. This is going to be exciting to watch. I'm just making a prediction. I think Miles agrees with me on that one. 
We're going to have some great runners, including Sydney Sin from Wayne Trace and the defending champion Taylor Roth from Minster. Here's our entire lineup. Erica Durst from Reed Northeastern, Jaylee Wingate of Norway. Sydney Sin, who just won the 400, broke re a record from Wayne Trace. Taylor Ross, your defending champion from Minster. Gianna Ritchie from Lake Center Christian. Elena Price from Tuscaroras CC. Emma Hammer of Woodmore. Delaney Kittner of Summit Country Day. Olivia Roarding of Hopewell Loudon, Megan Schwartz of Garraway, Megan Hippel of McDonald, Caroline Hamilton of Legacy Christian, Kiara Bahena of Wayne Trace, Jesse Johnson of Garraway, Katie Lane of Mogador, Annie Hamelgarn of Minster, Sophia Yan of Lowellville, and Gracie Miller of Liberty Center. Now, Jennifer, so many names that you just ran off there that you could say, I could see her winning this race. There is going to be a tremendous battle in it. Sydney Sin looking to go back to back state titles here. Taylor Roth, defending champ, great battle there. But don't leave out Jaylee Wingate from Norway in 21476 coming in today. This is two laps around the track. Fastest time coming in is Sydney Sin from Wayne Trace with a 21321. When you watch the uh, numbers on the sides of their hips, Sydney Sin has a three, Taylor Ross has a four, Olivia Roarding from Hope L. Loudon, nine, Wayne Trace's Kiara Bahena, 13, Annie Hemmelgarn from Minster is 16, and Gracie Miller of Liberty Center is 18. We'll start to get a better indication of who's where coming up short. Now, interesting thing to note is Sydney Sin just ran 20 minutes ago. I mean, really did not have a whole lot of time here to, to, to get a break there. Where we got Taylor Roth. She knows she's got to get out early if she's not going to have to attend with Sydney Sin. Sydney Sin is in second place right now. How much energy does she have from after that incredible 400 run? Right. That remains to be seen. Well, we know Sydney Sin does her best work the last portion of the race. Has a, a tremendous amount of kick, but Taylor Roth, I like her strategy, Jennifer. Get out in front, see if you can wear out the sensational one hanging out in second place. And that's who you see there as your leader, Taylor Roth from Minster. Already has one first place medal from yesterday in the four by eight. Minster girls just ran away with that win phenomenally. If Sin's going to do it, she's gonna to have to start to make her move here. Roth is extending this lead. Roth is such a phenomenal runner. Um, she's heading down to, to Florida. She'll be at an aeronautical engineering university running, uh, training for Homeland Security. And she is looking strong here in this straightaway. You might hear some of the people around us pushing for Taylor. Oh, Mr. Group, they love their track athletes. And what's not to love about Taylor Roth? Well, nice time as well there. Taylor Roth with a repeat. Sydney Sin with an impressive two back-to-back -back runs. That was impressive. Second place for her. Second place to Taylor Roth is nothing shabby. Any other Saturday, she wins another state title, but Taylor Roth, so dominant, the defending champ does it again. 2.11.72 is her time. Sydney Sin with a 2.15. We also had several other local runners in this as well. Let's see who made it to the top eight for the podium. Again, Roth is first, Sin is second, and looks like none of the rest of our runners made it to the top eight, but definitely great runs overall. Wayne Trace is in ninth. I'm with senior Sydney Sin of Wayne Trace, your state champion in the 400, but you also get another title with that state record holder in the 400 at 55 seconds flat. What feelings go through your mind, not only when you hear state champion, but state record holder? Uh, it really honestly was a shock because my plan, if I was going to go after that record this weekend, was to do it yesterday when I was a little bit more fresh and only had uh, two 400 instead of having an 800 like I did today. So I didn't get it yesterday, ran 55.8, so I was kind of disappointed and honestly wasn't really going after it today, but just felt really strong and honestly I didn't even know I got it until I heard my grandparents scream in the stands and then looked around and saw 55 flat. So it was honestly a shock. It's something that I knew I was capable of, um, that I've been looking like trying to go after a little bit all season but hadn't yet got there so to just finally get it was really exciting and I'm very happy. <laughs> then you got second in the 800 which for a lot of people 
seems almost impossible. <laughs> what type of conditioning and work goes into being able to compete in two events like that so close together and play so high? Yeah, it really, so I did the same thing last year. I didn't run the eight, but I qualified for state in both, but I was not near in the shape that I am this year. This year, I took my training very seriously all through indoor and then going into outdoor, working hard really, in, uh, really hard in the winter. So there was, I mean, a lot, a lot of hours and dedication that went into this season. I knew it was something that I was capable of, and if I really wanted to, I could go after it and place high in both of them. So to just see it happen, but I mean, it really comes down to just my God-given ability and without his strength and just my pure, I mean, my God-given talent, I wouldn't be where I am today, so. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Thank you. I'm here with senior Taylor Roth of Minster, your two-time state champion in the Girls 800. It's one thing to be named a state champion, now you get to add two-time to that. What's the feeling around that? Oh, I'm ridiculously grateful that's probably the best word I can come up with at the moment um, I knew I was gonna have to work my butt off and that's all I did today I just competed and here we are two-time state champ so some kids might place fifth sixth, and adjust what they have to do to get back to try and win a state title you were the defending state champ what kind of work went into defending a state title well, the first half of my season, I spent worrying about the pressure that I felt like I had on myself. And that was really hard. Like, I think I was behind just because I was focusing on the pressure. But I came into the last half of my season and I realized, no, there's, there's absolutely no pressure. I have nothing to lose. I just, I can only gain another state title. And so I think that mindset change really helped me today. And so, yeah, that's what I focused on. And here I am. All right. Thank you. And congratulations. All right, let's jump right into the boys' 800-meter run. Man, that was a fun girls' 800-meter run, watching our local runners run so well. I think the boys is going to be equally exciting. This is going to be a battle. Could watch uh, Taylor Roth and Sydney Sin battle each other all day long. That was a lot of fun, Jennifer. Absolutely, definitely, absolutely. And it's also great to know they're such great individuals. That's uh, it's always fun to have an opportunity to cover really solid uh, character in these athletes. Mm -hmm. All right, boys, 800-meter run, another great lineup. We've got Jackson Durfee of Tenora, also Caleb Sultan of Cedarville. Caleb Nastari from United, he is your champ from last year and your record holder. Whoa, a blazing 149.19 he comes in with. We also have Nathan Streeby of East Knox. Frank Rethman of Fort Loramie. Landon Armstrong of Bluffton. Alex Donaldson of Maplewood. Logan Frigis of Ashton Crestview, Carter Norman of Belpre, Zeb Wilson of Harden Northern, Connor Baldoff of Lincoln View, Bryson Himes of Maplewood, Carson McKay of Ottawa Hills, Aaron Gannon of Mount Gilead, Jack Kreeship of Minster, David Collin of Rittman, Sam Durstein of Bluffton, and Kyle Rabe of Sherwood Fairview. Well, Jeffrey Irma, sorry, your go finish. You kind of like looked around like, where's the rest of the field? He was unbelievable a year ago here. He is number three. That's you're going to see number three on his hip. That's Caleb Nastari from United. Certainly fun thing about coming here to the state meet. You see some incredible runners who are just launching. We don't know what he's going to do in his career, but we know he is such a talented runner. Looks to be challenged by some local runners. Jackson Durfee had himself a good morning already. Looks to challenge here again. Runners are still in their assigned lanes here as they make their way around the curve. Already, though, quite far ahead, Caleb Nestari from United is going to move into that first lane spot with a pretty strong lead there. Followed right behind him is Nathan Streeby of East Knox. Bluffton, don't uh, forget about Landon Armstrong. Yeah, Armstrong making a Fifth move. Fifth spot, and then the other Bluffton runner is seventh right now, Landon and Sam. To tell you how good our area, um, our area 800 was in the regional, Bluffton had one, one person make it in. The other one was the at-large, but his at-large time was significantly slower than, or was faster, I'm sorry, much faster than last year. Jennifer, it's called the... 800 meter run, but with Nastari, <laughs> they might want to rename this a sprint. Now look at him go. He is so impressive. 
Is he going to break any of his records? 149.56 is the state record. The D3 record is a 149.19, and he owns both of them. So we're watching the winner, but we also got to watch for the second place runner because that could be an interesting finish. And the star is going to win it easily. Oh, 148. <laughs> wow. Some nice finish there for Bluffton. We'll let you know how things shake out here as we watch the results. And Astari finishes in his trademark turnaround and look to see where everybody's at. Not even breathing hard. That young man, he is impressive. 148.31, a new record. How impressive breaking his own record. Let's hold on here and see if we can report how our local runners did. Who made it to the podium? Time now for event 17, the girls' 800-meter seated wheelchair race. In lane two, it's Elena Knowles of Glen Oak. Lane three, Jessica Albers, our hometown girl from Fort Laramie. Lane four, Esther Faith Hen of Grove City. Lane five, Milena Sobe of Streetsboro. And lane six, Asha DiPietro of Maslin Perry. The Jennifer, I got to hang out at the infield yesterday and, and interview a lot of athletes. And while I was doing it, I got to see these ladies up close when they're running their races. And their biceps are so impressive. These young ladies, they know how to get some work done. Oh, really, really impressive to watch these ladies make their way around. And the men, too, of course. We've also got men's seated races going on as well. Jessica Albers comes in with your, well, I was going to say, and that's not correct. I was going to say she has the fastest time, but it's lane six, Asha DiPietro out in lane six that just gets her by a second. And we're seeing that lady make her way around pretty quickly here. So the state meet record is a 229.80, set back in 2017 by Kaylee Hurley of Greenfield McLean. Pietro comes around at about a 106. If she keeps up that pace, we could have a new record, new record here. It just keeps pumping those arms on the wheel over and over again. The cardiovascular work that she's had to put in to get herself in this position. So we've got our leader on the back stretch, and we've got the rest of our ladies here making their way around for their second lap. We haven't talked a lot about how grueling the 800 is, whether you're running it or riding it. It is a strenuous, you're supposed to be, a, it's supposed to be not a sprint, but the, 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 these are some sprinting arms the happening thing at that the moment. People forget is the lower back. You know, you have to be extremely strong on that lower back, because if you're not, then your shoulders and arms don't have the opportunity to get that work done. All right, folks, let's watch our time here. The state record is a 229.80, and she is moving far, she moving fast to make her way in. 216, new state record there, congratulations. Absolutely, flew around this track. Well done, you deserve the state record, and you got it. All right, now we're watching for second place. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Looking pretty defined right now. However, third place, ah, she's speeding up a little bit. She's tightening that ground from second place. I got some major move on the outside, also challenging in fourth and fifth. Crowd claps as these ladies make their way to the finish line. Look at the determination, head down, just focusing on spinning the wheel. All right, there's your second place finisher right there. Here comes third place, and fourth place could have a challenge. Fourth and fifth right there, and we've got sixth place just about making her way in and finishing it up. This is the girls' 800 lead her seated race. Other seated races happening. We'll have the boys' 800 meter seated race, as well as the boys' 400 meter seated race, the girls' 400 meter seated race, as well as the 100 as well.
We're back now for the girls' 200-meter dash. In lane one, it's Leah Smith of Calvert. Lane two, Ellie Moeller of Liberty Center. Lane three, Naya Charlton of Trinity. Lane four, Izzy Zahn of Coldwater. Lane five, Brianna Genevi of Dalton. Lane six, Nigel Robinson of Finneytown. Seven, Cece Worsham, Temple Christian. Eight, Aaliyah Hilliard, Montpelier. And nine, Kinley Green of Fairbanks. Hey, Jennifer, Izzy Zahn of Coldwater, the super sophomore who's smashing records in the mat, 2-4, Point five four. She's got a good shot to win this thing. She's in lane four, and she's already out fast here as you make the way around the turn. She runs sudden. Cece Worsham, turn. though, also looking strong in seven. Izzy Zahn, look at her go. Making her way to a state championship. Dalton's trying to cast her down, won't do it. Izzy Zahn is your state champion. Hey, good for Izzy Zahn. The super sophomore, we're going to see her back here. She might be a three-time three, three champion. 24-39 is Izzy's time for her state championship run. Waiting here on the results to see. Worsham from Temple Christian with a 25-38. She gets fourth place. That's neat. After, Especially considering what she's gone through this week, that is phenomenal. After what happened to her on Sunday, she's going to look back at this week and know that she can handle any any kind of adversity that comes her way throughout the life. I want to mention Liberty Center's Ellie Moeller finished in fifth, so all our local runners made it to the podium. I'm here with Izzy Zahn, sophomore from Coldwater, who is your state champion in the girls' 200-meter dash. When you hear the word state champion attached to your name, what goes through your head? I don't even know what to say, to be honest. I'm just ecstatic, and I never thought that would happen ever, especially as a sophomore, so I'm just really excited. And I'm just grateful for my family, my friends, and everyone supporting me and helping me get where I am today. How do you think this is going to motivate you, knowing you're a sophomore and you have two more potential shots at this? Um, I'm just going to keep working. Hopefully, maybe next year I can get state again, see what happens. I just you know, put in the work, push myself, and just be confident more often. Congratulations, and thank you. Thank you. You know, Northwest Ohio went many years with strong showing in this 200 with the boys. In fact, Josh Vierhoff from Kaleida is your state meet and your D3 record holder. But no locals made it into uh, the finals here. Um, Alan East Hershberger tried, didn't make it in. But look at that in lane four, Cole Miller, like you said, painting the Valley gold. <laughs> He was a slingshot around that turn and catapulted himself easily for this win. Great job, congratulations, Cole Miller. 21-8-0 is his time. When we come back, it's gonna be time for the 3,200 meter run. You're watching State Track on WOSN. Time now for the girls' 3,200-meter run. You are watching the D3 State Track Finals, brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's Seamless Spouting. The ladies are off and running, and here is who is on the roster. Elena Mann of Botkins, Kaylee Richards of Maplewood, Lauren Sattler of Tenora, Reese Landis, New London, Samantha Seas of Peebles, Brittany Arnold, Botkins, Rebecca Geis, Heartland Christian, Michaela Meller, Liberty Center, Caitlin Carr, Smithville, Lily Schaefer, Seneca East, Jenna Ramsey, Toledo Emanuel Christian, Marini Camp, Minster, Megan Hippel, McDonald, Cheney Cedarleaf, Minster, Jocelyn Welch, Delta, Cecilia Chase, Colonel Crawford, and Bell Stanley, Norway, and Piper Gibson from Ripman. And Jennifer, your defending state champ, Megan Hipple from McDonald in this time of 1101.79, absolutely blistering. However, there are three ladies in this race that are sub 11. That's Kaylee Richards of Maplewood, a 10.52.71. And then a 10.5664, Rebecca Geese from Heartland Christian. And Caitlin Carr from Smithville, a 10 5 9 0, 8. This is going to be a tremendous run. Already we're starting to see a spread here. Our leader is uh, paving her way from the beginning with an intention to win this, I would imagine. <laughs> that is the goal, isn't it? Well, you give yourself a big lead early. You can wear out the runners behind you. Because a lot of this race, Jennifer, as you know, this is a mental race, not just a physical race. And it's 11.30 in the, in the morning as we are um, 
running this race. Well, we aren't running this race, but these ladies are running this race. And our temperature right now is 87 degrees. We have an air quality alert around. So these are the type of, of situations that these ladies are dealing with. Already here, you can see a battle for the second place spot. Saw some interchanging going on there in the second place spot, and it's gonna happen again, I'm gonna guess, once we get on the straightaway. Notice that those three ladies are starting to catch up with that first runner. I see a movement now challenging into second position. Reese Landis is the one you see out there on the outside. Elena Mann from Botkins, she's making her move right now and she's pushing her way into that leader spot. Now she had to change her stride, got boxed into the inside part, had to go around the runners to capture first place. Doesn't matter how you do it though, Jennifer, as long as you do it. Always interesting to watch this race since uh, there, you said it is a mental race. Every one of these racers has a strategy, knows exactly where she is in the race, knows what pace she wants to be going in the race, knows when she needs to pick it up. Interesting with Elena Mann, comes in with an 11.26.07, not even close to one of the top times, but she is currently your leader. When I've talked to distance runners, I ask them, well, what do you concentrate on? I get two answers, my steps or my breath. So interesting, you concentrate on your breath and kind of make sure your plan stays in fruition using your breath. We see another lead change. Now another thing you can watch with distance runners, and I see a little bit of all of it going on here, but it's how their arms are. Really the way you move your arms in a, in, in a long distance run will determine how your lungs are working. So you can see there, our Botkins runner, she's, she's kind of doing like the scoop. And that's always what I did in cross country, doing the scoop and she may not even have her hands in, um, in fists. A lot of times distance runners have their hands open because when you have fists, it actually uses more energy and these runners need to conserve their energy so that they can keep going at the pace that they want to be going. I had a track uh, coach tell us one time that used a potato chip grip. That was no problem for me. I knew how to grab potato chips real easy. That is a good idea, potato chip grip. I like that. That that works well. Uh, but I don't know that runners, long distance runners, are going to eat a lot of potato no chips. No ruffles to be on, honest. The, on the course today, yeah. thankfully. Though, if anybody's going to run the calories off, these ladies are going to do it. So our Botkins girl is now in second place with the third place looking like she's getting close and wants to challenge her, but still holding on to that second place spot. Bright Pink is our leader right now. That's Reese Landis from New London. She was challenged by Mann who had the lead briefly and she retook the lead and it looks like Mann's gonna have to struggle a little bit to maintain the second position. Got a little bit of a breeze going on, at least where we are. Not sure if that's hitting the ladies down on the track. That could be a welcome thing as they're dealing with you know, pretty intense heat down here. It always seems to be hotter down on the track as well. Yeah, it's definitely hot. And there's absolutely very few clouds to cover behind. The sun is directly on you here today. Reese Land is looking pretty strong here as she is just about to the halfway mark here. Her teammate is moving into the second spot. At least I think that's her teammate. No, maybe not. They just look like they have similar jerseys. Botkins currently in third. Megan Hippel of McDonald is in fourth. Brittany Arnold, another Botkins runner, just crossed her, almost tripped a little bit. I saw her have to retrace her steps. Sometimes you get so close to those runners, you can get their heel or a, a shift change happens, you're not ready for it. And, um, gotta be ready well, to stay one, When you're running in a there. pack, though, you, that's one of the things you have to be concerned with. That's why you see the, the really good runners try to get out in front, separate themselves from the rest of the pack, because they get this focus on yourself, not be worried about the runners around you. All right, speaking of our first place runner, I'm looking for that pink jersey. I'm gonna guess you at home have your eyes on her, but I looked down and before we had two pink jerseys. That's still Reese Landis out front. <coughs> and then Elena Mann from Botkins in the second spot. It is not, is it? No.
So interestingly, we have, uh, I have lost Reese Landis here on the track, who you are looking at there in, in that, that was the girl running in second place and appears to currently be in the first place position. So you're watching the 3200. Our top runner at the moment is Elena Mann from Botkins. Uh, she was in first place for a while. She was in third place. Um, it appears that right now she is in second place. Kaylee Richards from Maplewood is your current leader. With two laps to go. Uh, I wonder what happened with Reese Landis. Maybe she wasn't able to continue the race, but she is not on the track. That's Kaylee Richards from Maplewood, the, the leader. Down to two laps. So we are getting really close to the end of this race. And exciting moment really for Botkins. Elena Mann coming in with an 11 26 07. Uh, could be a really neat thing for her to finish so high up. Well, a lot of these runners, they get assigned a number and they'll put the sticker on the, their track uniform. And uh, Richards decided to put it on their inside leg, so it was tougher for us to see. <laughs> Miles pulled out his binoculars and uh, was able to let us know that that is exactly who we're seeing, Kaylee Richards. Interesting, Kaylee Richards was all supposed to run the mile. She chose, I don't know if she chose not to run it, but she is not listed. She listed as did not start. I'm wondering if she wanted to conserve her energy because she really felt like this was the race that she could do really well in. If that was her choice, Jennifer, it looks like it was the right choice indeed as she has taken over the later part of this race and really making this a no doubter. One lap to go. Kaylee Richards of Maplewood is your current leader. And as we move back over to our second place runner, that would be Botkins. Elena Mann from Botkins. Gonna have to do some serious work to maintain that second position because Sattler from Tenora, known as a great finished runner, she is challenging her to get that second spot. One lap to go for these ladies eight laps around the track. Now, Sattler looks strong. She's going to kick it in on this last lap. She might get that second spot. But it's going to be Richards, who I think is going to coast easily for this win. And Abby, why don't you move over here? Let's move over to our second spot with Bodkins. Let's just jump over to the second place spot. We know that Kaylee Richards is doing great. But let's watch what happens here. Bodkins currently in the lead, but the back stretch is where some things might change right now. And we do see that happening yes, as we're about to a have move. a leader change. This is the hard point. Now look, oh, Botkins, Elena Mann, she's like, I don't know about that. I just saw her, her kick it up just a little bit to try and uh, keep up with that girl who was taking that second place spot. That was Lauren Sattler now in second from Tenora. Known as a great finisher and you're seeing why. Does Elena Mann from Botkins have anything left? And she's showing that she does right here. So Kaylee Richards, just so you know, she just finished first with a time of about 10.23. And here she comes. Botkins is in second, but watch from behind. You talk about finishers. This is going to be quite the finish. Wow. Extra energy at the end. Be interesting to see how they determine who came across where. Hartland Christian gets the second place spot. McDonald third. And I'm going to guess Botkins' man was fourth. Tal Sattler from Tenora was fifth. A great job by the training staff here at the Jesse Owens. Getting to the athletes right away. You can see how grueling this race is. Look at the competitors hit the grass right away. They left everything they had on the track.
Boys 3200 meter run is off and running. Riley Nixon of Ottawa Hills, Kellen Riker, Jackson Center, Noah Sharp of Fisher Catholic, Rylan Holland of East Canton, Luke Ellerbrock, Columbus Grove, Asher Long Covington, Luke Snyder, Rittman, Blake Rogers, Belpre, Michael Kelly, Ottawa Hills, Jackson Varner, Waynedale, Wilt Baker, Mount Gilead, Asher Knox, West Liberty Salem, Connor Nolan, Reed Eastern, Eric Nygaard, Bluffton, part of that four by eight winning team from yesterday, Jack Swartz of Chuslaw, Owen Harrison, West Liberty Salem, Dennison Murphy of Grandview Heights, and Trent Coke. Columbus Grove. Yeah, Trent Cook, a tremendous runner. That's a family that loves their track. Brother, big discus thrower. He's gonna be throwing disc at uh, Finley University. Jennifer, some amazing times in this grouping, uh, but more, most impressive, Ryland Holland from East Canton at 916-38. Oh, oh no. Oh, collision on the track. That is unfortunate, and we know that that can happen when you have a bump uh, uh, a bumped up Bluffton's Eric Nygaard and another runner. Uh, really tough when you have that big, big group. And Nygaard came in with a 9-3-8-7-3, and if there's anybody, though, that won't let that bother, it's Eric Nygaard. He is a disciplined runner. You see him now. He's going to get himself back up into that pack. That's right. We're going to make sure that our camera goes back from the top two. And let's go back to that um, pack right there and see that Nygaard, ran from behind and he already has pulled himself back up. He is very resilient, um, as you mentioned. Part of that four by eight winning uh, relay yesterday and really spent a lot of mental focus into this race. He's gonna be uh, running at the University of Charleston next year. He'll be shuffling off to Charleston, won't he? <laughs> He's gonna do a great job down there. You ever been to Charleston? Absolutely beautiful place. It absolutely is. It is a beautiful place. It certainly helps. Uh, I think families like it when their kids go to college in a beautiful place. If you're gonna send checks, might as well send it to a pretty place, right? Uh, I guess so. All right, who's our leaders right here? They have number eight and number seven on their legs, and that would be Blake Rogers of Belpre and Luke Snyder of Rittman. Luke Snyder with a 918 coming in, but Brylan Holland of East Canton, he's number four. He has a 916 as his seed time. Yeah, no surprise that Luke Snyder is up at the top. Blake Rogers trying to keep pace. Realize it's probably tough for you to see the numbers on their hips, but Kellen Reichert of Jackson Center is two. Luke Ellerbrock of Grove is five. Eric Nygaard of Bluffton is 14, and Trent Koch of Columbus Grove is 18. Miles, I just want to follow up. You know, we mentioned in the girls' 3,200 meter run that we did not know what happened to the leader. I looked down, looked up, and didn't see her anymore. Just disappeared. Our top cam operator, Abby, says that she saw it through her camera. The, uh, the girl fainted. She went down. So in our prayers prayers for her that she is doing okay and that she's recovering well. Uh, the heat, this is, the heat is oppressive down there on the track. That's a good way to describe it, oppressive. There's just no way to get out of it. The shaved ice guys are loving it, though. They're selling all kinds of shaved ice here. See, major move, trying to retake first place. Boy, they are battling hard. Noah Sharp, who's number three, he is uh, trying to make a move as well. Who are you pointing out there? I saw you point on something. Eric Nygaard is making a move, too. We were talking about how he is a resilient guy. Glad to see that Nygaard, who had the stumble early in this race. He is making a move to get back up to the, where the leaders are. There's a good battle between the top two runners. Chaden spots real quick. We're at 3.53, or 54, 55, 56, 3.57, right at four minutes right now in this race. Give you a uh, update here on the scores that we just received from our scores guy, Ryan Shadowald, who's down on the field. Here's the boys update leading into the 3200. Paint Valley is leading, actually Paint Valley is tied with Marion Local for number one, 30 points. Marion Local vying for a state championship. Tenora is third with 27. Columbus Grove is fourth with 25. Anna is fifth with 20. Bluffton is tied with Oberlin for sixth with 18. Allen East is tied with Ottawa Hills for eighth in 17. So our local runners, really showing well today at the state meet in the finals. At Snyder and Rogers battling for one and two and then Sharp hanging out in the third spot. Still a lot of time left in this race. 
there really is a lot of time, and that's the important thing to remember. Um, you can see one runner be strong way at the beginning, not realizing that there's a runner four back who already has a plan to kick it in in well, the second half. We definitely saw that in the ladies' race. That's right. That's right. Got three at the top working for that leader spot. A fourth one kind of out in the open. And then that fifth spot's a pack. Top three runners virtually matching strides. And we've got a leader change again here. Actually, maybe not. I think Sharp from Fisher Catholic trying to make a move. Snyder and Rogers just continuing to hold everyone off. It looked like Sharp was going to move to the outside, but ran out of straight track to do it. You don't want to make that move on a turn. Eric Nygaard is currently in 12th place. Got to remember, he stumbled uh, you know, with, a, with another person and was in last for a while, so he's moved his way up to 12th place. As you're watching this, we want to remind you that TV44 and WOSN are viewer-supported television stations. Your donation at any amount is part of what makes a broadcast just like this one possible. Perhaps you'd like to make a donation as a way to say thank you for our support of your local athletes. Go to WTLW.com forward slash donate to make a donation of any size. You can also call 419-339-4444. Visit us Monday through Friday between 9 and 4 or mail a donation to 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. Wow, it looks like the first place spot is in jeopardy. And take a look there. That's Columbus Grove. That's Luke Ellerbrock now making his move to make his way up. Uh, Luke kind of held out into the weeds at the beginning part of this race, but he is asserting himself, challenging the top spot now moved into second. That's exciting to see. Of course, I love it seeing all of our local people do well here at the state meet. Speaking of doing well, here is an update for you on the girls entering the four by four. Before I read that, tell me what you see going on. Uh, Luke, virtually even now in the first position, but he's kind of boxed out. He's going to be off the match strides from the outside position. Can he get in front and then take over that inside lane before he gets to the turn? Well, we're going to see. We are getting really close to the end. These guys have about a lap and a half left to go. So this is where you're going to see that kick in. And like you mentioned, Ellerbrock is running extra, extra yards here because of where his location is. Now you see him tucking a little bit more back into that second place spot. You want to make the move here on the straightaway and get in front. And we got another mover making in, Brylon Holland of East Canton. He's the one that comes in with that 9-16-38. And look at this, our leader before us saying, uh-uh, I don't think so. I'm not going to let you take over here. I, I don't know where Rogers has gotten the energy. Every time he's been challenged, he just picks up his pace. Oh, almost had a stumble there with Holland from East Canton. And now Holland is going to make his move in the spot where you make the move, right there on the straightaway. Look, Ellerbrock from Columbus Grove, still trying to hold on to that third place spot. His, uh, his body language is shifting just a little bit, but he's only got about half a lap to go if he can just hold on. Talk about holding out and waiting for your moment. Mr. Holland, he knows exactly what his plan is and how to execute it. Fantastic run by him. Carlin Holland, he's a senior from East Canton. His seat time is 9.16.38. Not going to break that today, but doesn't have to as he strides his way into the end, even looked back to see where he was. Second place is Blake Rogers of Belpre, but watch what's happening here. He's gonna try to pass on the inside. Luke Ellerbrock just gets knocked out at the end and he's gonna get fourth place. If we hold on here as we watch the guys come through, we'll give you a rundown of what we see as it comes on the board. East Canton's Holland with the victory, 924-75. Belpre's Rogers is second. Rittman, the Rittman runner gets third place. That was Snyder from Rittman that was able to launch himself in front of Elbrock to get that third spot. Elbrock's gonna 
hold on to get fourth. Jackson Center's Riker finishing in seventh place with a time of 9.34. And that will round out our local runners who made it onto the podium. I'm here with Luke Ellerbrock, who just finished fourth in the boys' 3,200 meter out of Columbus Grove. Was that your goal coming in? Did you expect to finish this high, or is this kind of an overachievement for you? Yeah, it was definitely a bit of an overachievement. I was, I was seated seventh going into it. My, my plan kind of was to just find that like pack right around fourth, fifth place and just hang on as long as I could. And I kind of, I did just that. And yeah, it was definitely. It a goal of mine to finish around here and a bit of an overachievement too. Next year will be your Finishing senior year. Third. Yep. What's going to motivate you going into next year? Well, I'm just going to work harder than I did this year. I thought I worked really hard to get here and just going to step it up a little bit and work even harder and see what I can do next year. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. Four by four, here we go. It's the final two races of the D3 uh, finals. And leading into that, Norway is your leader with 34 points. Coldwater is tied for, or has fourth with 27. Minster has sixth with 25. And Liberty Center has seventh with 23.5. Here's who we have running in lane one, it's Mooney. Lane two, Woodmore. Lane three, Colonel Crawford. Lane four, Wayne Trace. Lane five, Minster. Lane six, Calvert. Lane seven, Mechanicsburg. Lane eight, Margareta. And lane nine, Toledo Christian. I had the opportunity, the pleasure, to interview the Wayne Trace ladies yesterday after their heat time. And they all but guaranteed a state title today. They got their work cut out for them, though. It's a really good Minster team to their right. Imagine this, Jennifer. If it comes down to the anchor, let's see Sydney Sin against Taylor Roth yet again. What a fun uh, race, the entire meet we've had today, and to finish it off with a race like this is great. Like you said, four by four ladies, the top two times are Wayne Trace with a 359.04 and Minster with a four minute point seven. Those were your top two winners in the heats yesterday. Yeah, it's gonna be fun to see what happens as these ladies make their way around the oval for the finish of the first leg. That's Winans for Wayne Trace and Heckman for Minster carrying it. And right now, it's actually Calvert that's looking like they may have the lead. Toledo Christian Stainbrook out there in lane eight, also with a pretty impressive run. Let's watch the handoffs to see who hands off first. Oh, it's Wayne Trace. Yeah, Wayne Trace had the first exchange, but not far behind was Minster. Calvert's still looking pretty strong as well. Always a strong running school. Caroline Laniket is your runner. Kara Bahina for Wayne Trace and Margaret Hemelgarn running for Minster. <laughs> Wayne Trace looking like they're sitting in the fourth spot right now. However, one thing you can remember, and Danny mentioned this yesterday, when you know what you can expect from your anchor, you can be in specific spots in your relay and not be worried. Hey, that's why they call him the anchor, right? <laughs> and now we see Wayne Trace making a move there on the outside, moving into the second spot, getting ready to hand off to Caroline Winans. Now the second of the two Winans sisters what an athletic family. Their brother, a tremendous athlete, also on the baseball field, great football player and basketball player as well. And I think these girls are just freshmen. Ninth graders, which is uh, two ninth graders and two seniors make up this race. Oh, look at what's happening with Minster now. Ava Stammen, she's making her move into the third place spot. Getting things ready for that anchor leg that we have anticipated. Imagine the ladies that are the anchor, waiting for the baton. What is going through their mind right now? Woodmore is your leader right now. Wayne Trace is in second, and Minster is in third. Let's not count out Woodmore. Reserve Travis, she'll be the anchor. Three fantastic anchor ladies about ready to get for the, the baton. Woodmore is off. Wayne Trace is off. Minster's off in the fourth spot. 
Sydney Sin has some work to do to catch up with Azure Travis. Oh, Travis is off and going because she knows who's chasing her down. <laughs> Watch Sydney Sin just shot out when she got the baton. Chasing her down. Now, is Sydney Sin going to do what we saw her do yesterday? Is she going to tuck in behind and then take off when she hits that 200 mark? She's tucking in. She's holding on. Not sure she wants to pass on the curve, but what? she doesn't have time. She's think. like, you know what? I got to run my pace, and here she goes. Sydney Sin moving her way into another state championship, and the crowd is on their feet. I don't think she wanted to tuck in. She wanted to keep going. Sydney Sin doing it again. Watch the finish here. Minster's currently in the fourth spot. And they'll get it. Fourth place for Minster. Watch Sydney sit run over to her teammates. Bear hug time for the 4x4 champs from Wayne Trace. 354.85. What a phenomenal time for the Wayne Trace ladies. Minster finishing fourth with a 401.99. That's the girls' 4x400 relay. I am with the Wayne Trace girls, your two-time state champion in the girls' 4x400 meter relay. Girls, say your first and last name. What grade you're in? I'm Corrine Winans and I'm a freshman. Sydney Sin, I'm a senior. Kiara Bahina, I'm a senior. I'm Caroline Winans and I'm a freshman. And so, two time state champion, but this year you get to add state record holder to that title. What goes through your guys' mind when you hear such high accolades coming from your group? Well, after last year when we ran a 355, I think it was .95, we weren't going for the record just for the win, but we, since we were so close, it was like, it was in the back of our minds this year. So to be able to say that we have the state record now and with two freshmen, I, that's means the world because they have so much young talent at Wayne Trace. And so I'm excited to see what the future holds. And for you, Sydney, that final leg, you had a decent gap to make up. Once you got that baton, what ran through your mind? So I get the baton and I look forward and I see her out in front of me and I mean I've 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 closed a few gaps in my days. So I knew that I was just gonna have to run hard and I closed the gap down the back stretch and with two hundred to go I was right on her tail. So then I was trying to decide when I should go and when I should make my kick. And um, coming off the four hundred I was really confident, felt really strong. So I knew that if I just kicked and gave it all I had that we could come out with it. Congratulations ladies and thank you so much. Boys 4x400 relay, here we go. This is it, the final race of this D3 meet. Going into this, Marion Local and Columbus Grove and Paint Valley all have 30 points. And Marion Local has a pretty strong team here. They are in lane three. Bluffton is in lane two. Here's who we have overall. Northmore in one, Bluffton in two, Marion Local in three, Ashland Crestview in four, United in five, Hardin Northern in six, Fort Laramie in seven, Lowellville in eight, and Wayne Trace in nine. We've really seen some tremendous running from Marion Local. A lot of come from behind running. Like I feel like we don't see them in the lead, and then we get to the end, and whoo, there's that blue and yellow jersey coming through. It means they made the right selections on three and four. Best time in this is Crestview, the three, two, three, two, five. Yeah. They're hanging out in lane four. And that's Ashland Crestview, just so you know. Uh, not the Crestview that we have, Convoy Crestview, that is Ashland Crestview. Lowellville runners getting a little bit of praise out there. He is in lane eight. That's Braylon Dabney doing a good job for Lowellville. Hudson Myers carried it for Wayne Trace, giving it to Cole Moorhead. Ashland Crestview, that is who uh, um, I believe got the handoff first. Fort Loramie, uh, we had a Fort Loramie crew right close to us and they're getting pretty excited about their runners that were over in lane seven. A lot of coaches up here in the stands, Jennifer, you can hear them around us talking to the runners. Take a look at what Landon Armstrong's doing out there, if he is our second runner, but that's Bluffton. I saw him just make an exchange, or I mean make a, a move there to get himself into the fourth spot, and now he's trying to make a move here 
into the third spot. We got Marion Logal challenging for first. Remember, all Marion Logal needs is one point, and they are going to be your state champions. Tate Hess carrying it now. Boxed on the outside for Marion Local. Tate Hess, we know that name well. Tate Hess, great athlete there. Landon Schittler is running for Bluffton. He's in that fourth spot. It was Landon Armstrong who carried it the second leg for Bluffton, did a good job getting his team in contention. We still got Harden Northern out here too. In the, uh, Harden Northern and Fort Loramie, also very strong contenders. This is still quite the race. Well, you always want to give your team a shot with the anchor. And Marion Local has done that. Marion Local moving into first place with the uh, thought that a win here will also be a win overall in this entire meet. Bluffton is in fourth. That's Eden Antrim as he kicks his way off and around the oval. Owen Rindler carrying it now for Marion Local. The hopes and dreams, not just of this race, but the entire meet. Of course, we got a big shout out to Columbus Grove uh, to, to finish at, at the point where they are. Um, it's also, you know, they had such good field events, which they knew coming in here. Uh, it's gonna be a challenge down this straightaway. Wow, look at that. Ashton Crashview gets the win, Marion Local second. What a run by all of our runners. 322.76 is the winning time for Ashland Crestview. Marion Local, second place here, but first place overall in this meet. 323.70 is the time for that group of four runners. Your fifth place, Harden Northern, 326.08. Bluffton, six with a 326.25. Jennifer, can't say enough about Addison Raymer from Ashland Crestview with the anchor, he picked the right kid indeed to go to get this championship. Nice job by Crestview. Absolutely, got the job done. Wayne Trace also finishing in seventh place. So we had multiple local teams making their way to the all Ohio status. Congratulations to them. Big congratulations to Marion Local for an incredible day out here on the track. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us with our D3 coverage. Of course, we've got highlights to show you from field events. Patrick Campbell's gonna bring you that. We also have D2 finals that are coming up, but we are so grateful that you have had an opportunity to share this great event with us. For Abby Beck, Cassidy Driscoll, Grace Beck, Jack McGuire, Megan Sherrick, Jacob O'Neill, Nick Fraley, and Miles Holiday. I'm Jennifer Beck. We want to say thank you so much for watching the OHSAA Division Three State Finals right here on WOSN. I am here with Kyle Grabowski, head coach of the Marion Local Track and Field Team, your state champions as a team. Coach, what does that mean to be able to call this team state champions? Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, we, we had a great season, undefeated the whole way. At regionals, we had some things that were rated pretty high and ranked pretty high in the state go down. And honestly, I thought it was off the table. But everyone who came this week, uh, they, they scored. Everyone, every person on the bus scored uh, in one of their events. And so it was a, a true team effort, which is awesome because you don't always see that in track and field. Sometimes it's just one great athlete, but this was a team performance. And was there anything about this team that as the year went on kind of surprised you? Um, we had some sophomores and juniors make bigger jumps than were anticipated, uh, and that allowed for our seniors to have a little bit more relaxed seasons up until this meet, and then our seniors really stepped up and scored the most points possible for us. And so, last question I got for you is just, what does it mean to continue? <laughs> <laughs> First off, how did that feel? Cool. <laughs> what does it mean to continue a winning tradition at Marion Local? Um, there's so many coaches and programs for us that have had so many great seasons and, and titles, uh, and it's great to join those ranks. Coach, enjoy this one. We thank you so much. Thank you very much. And we will be ending our time here at Jesse O. Patrick Hamler will be continuing coverage with highlights from Division Two.